What is up, guys, and welcome back to Working Hard, Hardly Working, the solo episodes. That needs a theme tune. Today, we're talking about job applications, and we are going to talk about how to ace a job application from the perspective of an employer. Now, as I say, I am an employer and I offer jobs a lot, but I am also not the only employer in this world. So if I say something and then someone else says something and they're not the same thing, I'm sorry. I'm telling you from my point of view and my experience um, how to raise a job application, what would be absolute no-goes for a job application um, in my opinion, cover letters, CVs, etc., etc. We all lead busy lives and I will be the first person to say that some things like sorting out my finances easily slips to the bottom of my to-do list. That is until I found Revolut, which is a financial super app for all things money. I am a big believer that when saving for the more aspirational things in life, like going on holiday or even buying your first home becomes so much easier when you get on top of your everyday spending. Why not make the most of intuitive technology that takes all of the hassle out of budgeting for you and also helps you spend and save smarter? You can join the 28 million people worldwide who've downloaded the Revolut app for free. So I think you know what to do. Download Revolut for free and sign up to your account now. Thanks guys. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like if you search up how to do a good job application on the Google, there's so much of the same like bland advice. Um, and so I'm excited to generally just answer your dilemmas and hopefully be able to shed some light on from my point of view in this current modern day age of the 21st century, what I would expect to see and what would be a complete turn off for me and what would be an absolute yes for me at job application stage. Obviously, job applications, very important. If you want the job, you're going to have to have a good job application. We've already done an episode on job interviews. Um, so make sure to go and listen to that after if you are going through a job application stage at the moment. But I do think there are some pretty clear things that you need to get right in a job application. And it's not going to be the be all and end all. I'd always say the interview is more important. However, I will never hire just off interview and I will never hire just off application. By the end of this episode, I want you to feel super confident in how to ace a job interview, how to feel like you're putting your best foot forward, how to stand out from the crowd. Um, and I'm going to answer a load of dilemmas so that hopefully you will have some of your specific questions asked as well. So first things first, one of the most important things about a job application is that you don't just send off your like bog standard CV to the company and expect them to do the work for you, tying together, like joining together the dots of why you would be good for this role. That is your responsibility. If you are looking at a job and you're thinking, I'd be amazing for this role, tell them why you'd be amazing for that role. You can do that in two ways through there might be an external application outside of your CV and your cover letter, but there also might not. You can very easily do this from your CV and cover letter. So first of all, let's talk about the CV. The cover letter is more specific in this direction. Um, and I'm not really sure who even asks for cover letters anymore. I see a cover letter more as a kind of the email that you would send your job application with. But if there's an option for a cover letter, always include it because I would rather receive an application that essentially tells me why this person would be good at this job rather than me having to filter through their like bullet pointed CV to be like, oh, this might mean they're good at this. This might mean they're good at this. So with your CV, first of all, make sure it's not too long. Um, I would make sure that it's no more than two pages. Usually the ones that are too long have too little relevant experience and they're just trying to show kind of like first job style that you've done work before. Um, and that's fair enough. Obviously, that's good if you're just trying to show you've done work before. Um, but if you are applying for a job that you want to show why you are specifically good for that job, then I would spend most time and have most bullet points ready for the roles that are specifically going to help you be good at this role and why you think you would be good at this role. So obviously it goes without saying, filter your CV so it's got the most recent job at the top um, and fil filtering it then in like, like anti-chronological order, chronological order backwards. Most recent first, least recent last. Then obviously what you're gonna wanna do is you want bullet points of what that job entails. Um, I would have a little look at the job listing for the role you're applying for and just highlight the things that seem to be the main things that they're standing for. So it might be like diary management. It might be pulling together a publication or a report of some form. It might, it might be anything. You want to then make your bullet points clearest in the direction of those points that they mention on their job listing. Because again, you're basically doing the hard work for them and you're showing them what in your recent job roles has been most applicable to their current job role that they are listing for. Then on your cover letter, this is a little bit more simple. 
I think when at school anyone mentioned a cover letter, it seemed to be like this weird little like thing that no one actually knew what it meant. And I'm not sure I still even know what a cover letter means. However, as someone who has employed like, I don't know, maybe like nearly 20 people in the past year, um, I would say that a cover letter for me is more something that just going to show me before I even look at your CV, why you want the job, why you'd be well suited to it. It's not like a personal statement in that form. However, it's just outlining what you're applying for, your recent experience, why essentially your recent experience is well suited to this role, why you would be good for it and why it would be good for you. I think that's quite important. I think employers always want to know that this is your desired next step in your career. So I think it is always good to add in there why this is your desired next step as well. Mm -hmm. Then kind of along similar lines, take time to research the company that you are applying for, obviously. Um, but also it might be that in their about section on their website, they talk specifically about like really valuing innovation or really valuing a like family like office atmosphere. Um, and you want to be able to highlight those things that are not just on the job listing, but are also on their website in terms of like the types of people they see as being a good fit for the company. Like I remember someone once sending an application and they were kind of like, these three things and also I bake a mean banana bread and like no one says good no to a good banana bread and I think like if it's a company that shows they're that type of you know a little bit fun a little bit you know more of a family atmosphere less corporate etc cetera, etc cetera, then try and squeeze that in there obviously make sure it's the right audience if it's like a very corporate law firm then maybe don't do that but I think it's always good to get a little bit of personality to a professional extent in there. Obviously harder to do if you haven't done a lot of this already and especially if you're British, um, but do not be afraid to show off. I think it's really like, this is the one place you need to show off. If you're not showing off, if you and another person have exactly the same skills and qualifications and they're showing off and you're not in terms of being like, I'm particularly good at this, these are my strengths, blah, 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 then you're gonna look worse than they are. Um, and that's just the name of the game. It's a job application, get comfortable with it, start showing off. I think one of the most valuable things that I perceive through seeing someone's job application is generally seeing the impact they've had at previous roles. So it might be saying that, you know, when you joined the role, the reporting was done like this. However, this was particularly inefficient. So I worked out a way to do it like this. Um, to me, that's the, exactly the type of person I want to employ. It really shows that they are, you know, they take initiative, they're on their feet, they don't just take things by rote. They want to constantly improve efficiency and also just make things work better. And they're not just there to get the job done. They're also there to kind of make the job be done better and faster. Goes without saying, proofread, download Grammarly. I don't care if there's another better competitor to Grammarly now. I have always used Grammarly. Use someone else. I do not care, but download it and proofread it. If I see a mistake in an application, I'm just going to be like, you don't care. And also you don't proofread things. Literally word check, spell check is free. It's free and you didn't even bother to do that. So what are you going to do when you're actually in the job? Because this is the best you're ever going to come across. Um, and then also meet the deadline the amount of things and obviously okay an exception to this is when jobs like disappear because the roles are filled and I would always bear in mind that that can always happen or something like LinkedIn sometimes they don't keep the applications open when they filled they might have filled the role already because people are generally going to start interviewing as soon as applications come in so I would note if you see a job on LinkedIn note down if there's a person or an email address just in case it disappears um but I would also say the amount of messages that I get that are like oh shit I missed the deadline for this can I still apply and it's like no <laughs> because if you miss the deadline for the job application imagine what you're going to be like in the job just bear that in mind I know there's probably some good excuses but personally I wouldn't have it I would also say throughout a job application process keenness is never a bad thing I talked about this before but I think there's this misconception that you kind of need to play like hard to get when you're going for a job to be like oh I'm desired by all these other people if you're genuinely desired by all these other people that's absolutely fine and I think any good employer will know that a good person is also going to be desired by other people I don't think playing like not keen in terms of replies is ever 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 helpful if someone starts being less keen during an application process again I'm like this is the most keen you're ever going to be like like applying for the actual job and so like if you're not so sorry if you're not that keen when it comes to actually um you know replying to emails about the job or it might be a follow-up question or it might be a asking when the interview is obviously you can have a normal reply time but I think that like if you're leaving it for a few days no sorry 
So let's whiz through some dilemmas because I've already rambled on for a while. What is new? Um, hi, Grace. It's about to be my A-level summer and I want to earn a bit of cash as a backup before uni. Um, my question is, is there anything specific that I could put on my job applications to other places that would help me stand out from the probably hundreds of other people who have already applied? Is there one unique quality that you tend to look for when employing that you really value. Um, I think this is tough and this is just classic in the job market, especially when you're going for something that's probably earlier on in your career. It's obviously going to be something that there are going to be more applicants. Like I think we put up we put up like a brand assistant applica- applicant role the other day. So it's, you know, doesn't need that many years of experience. It's an assistant role, et cetera, et cetera. And it got like a thousand applicants within the first day. And that was without like, that was before I'd even like posted about it. Sorry, look at Ziggy. I want to be where Ziggy is right now. I do think it is hard. And obviously it goes without saying that probably specific experience is always going to put someone higher up on the list because, you know, if there's a thousand applicants and five of them have experience in that area when actually the job was open to people without experience, they're probably going to go for the people with experience. Um, I would say there are a few things you can do to set yourself apart. I would say obviously be professional and all of that, but I would say those kind of personality things that I was saying, saying you could kind of get in there, like that person who was like, besides I bake a mean banana bread or whatever it might be, um, that kind of are just more likely to get you in or get you no noticed as like a you know it's boring going through thousands of applications like something that's going to stand out to like a hiring like a recruitment manager or whatever it might be someone who just sounds like a normal person um and so I think that can it really help but again it's all going to be about experience and I know that's so tough because it's like you need experience to get experience but even anything that you can be like I don't know like I remember my um I did this like freelancing job when I was in would have been AS level summer so I mean they don't have AS levels anymore (laughs) so old they in like one of my sick form summers I did like freelancing for one of the mums at my school she had like a language school and she just put up a thing in the bulletin and I didn't like know her at all but I sent an email being like oh yeah I have done like leafleting before as in like I can design like flyers I can do like you know, like I've, I've, you know, always used social media, blah, blah, blah. Like I kind of put things together that like weren't official experience, but that got me that first bit of experience. So anything you can do, it might be literally doing something for like your mum or like your family friends thing or like whatever that would just show as like a little bit of experience they're always going to prefer that to nothing or even like if you don't have that experience try and do it yourself so if it's a marketing role like go on to canva and make them some marketing assets from their social media stuff like their imagery that will show that sure maybe you don't have experience but you have the aptitude um so anything you can do out of that that will truly set you apart i think is important when it comes to those jobs where there are literally like thousands of applicants Hi Grace, I'm really struggling at the moment. I've been out of full-time work since February and any part-time job I've had isn't working out. I'm applying to dozens of jobs a day. I keep getting rejected or not meeting entry requirements, um, even though I've worked in marketing for a year. What advice would you have for someone applying to all of these jobs? I want to start my career. I'm enthusiastic and I'm a sponge trying to learn as much as I can, but it's difficult to remain motivated. Totally understand this. That sounds like a really horrible situation. I'm really sorry that you're in this situation. I think especially in areas like marketing with social media and everything at the moment, it's just such a saturated market. Um, And so I do think like as much experience as you could, you know, you've said that you've done some part time work. Can you really big that up? Can you really show that, you know, how appropriate that is and like how well suited that experience is to all of the roles you're going for? Essentially, it's just tough. And just remember that if you knew that you had to apply to like 100 jobs and the 101st one would be like your dream job, then you would be happy each one you got rejected from. Um, So I just think keep going. I'm really sorry. Keep going and keep trying to big up your experience. And as I've said, maybe try and make some marketing materials for the company on Canva just to show that you like can, even if that you're not like a graphic designer, like you're just showing that you have aptitude and keenness and you go the extra mile and all of that. But I'm sorry you're in that situation. That seems really shit. Keep trying, keep going. Hi Grace, I'm a sociology and anthropology graduate and I'm finding it hard to get my uh, to get a decent first job. Since leaving university, I've had three jobs, but none of these jobs are meant to be longer than six months to one year. And I just want to figure out how to brand myself as long-term when I'm fresh-ish out of university and looking to start my career. Any thoughts on this would be amazing. So I completely understand and I think this is tough, but I also would say like, don't get caught up in the fact that it's like only six to six months to a year like that's still amazing experience and that is still experience and that is still getting you closer and closer to your dream job a career isn't just staying in the same job for 10 years 
it's like you create your career like you create the path you go down and each of these jobs is really valuable experience you're probably learning even more than if you were in like the same job for a few years so I do think like don't look down on that I do think that what can start to look iffy is if someone only has like six month to one thing year things on their CV and I would just say call that out like if I've been interviewing someone and my one red flag for them like I think they're great I think they'd be well suited to the job and all of that and my one red flag for them is that like they seem to have been jumping around jobs first of all I'll probably ask but second of all if they call it out in their cover letter be, and being like you might notice that all of my jobs have been six months to a year that's because I'm a recent graduate I've been prioritizing getting a breadth of experience and now I'm really looking for a longer term like by taking placement roles and now I'm really looking for something longer term hit like just address it like if there's an elephant in the room and you think it looks bad just address it um and to me that would put my mind at ease and i think great cool they've just been building up their cv they've been getting lots of different experience like they've got a breadth of experience from lots of different types of people lots of different types of places etc etc great excited to work with them so i wouldn't look down on that too much experience is still great experience learn as much as you can um and then just like address the elephant in the room we are going to end with some fun facts Oh, this is a really fun fact. 76% of resumes, uh, okay, A, C, Bs for the English people, as in British. Sorry, that sounded like savage to the US people. Um, are discarded for an unprofessional email address. I, if you don't have a professional email address, literally email addresses are free. Just sign up for a new one and just make it your name. Don't be a fool. What? This is wild. There's apparently an 88% rejection rate when you include a photo on your resume. I would love to know why that is, but maybe just don't do that. That's so weird. Only 35% of applicants are actually qualified for the jobs they apply to. I think we're just going to end with that fact. I think that just goes to show you fake it till you make it, honey. Put it all together. No one goes into a job knowing exactly how to do that job. Otherwise, they would be going into a higher job because they'd be wanting to sidestep higher. Just remember that. So... You need to do the hard work in terms of being like, this is why I am well suited for this job in terms of like linking two and two together. Ultimately, no one's actually qualified for it. So you might as well fucking go for it. That's where we're going to end today. <laughs> I hope you have a good day as always. And please like, subscribe, follow. I don't know what platform you're on. So thanks. <laughs>